Welcome back to the fish room. Today's video will hopefully be really helpful for those of you that have struggled to keep the tinted waters in a planted aquarium. Um, so yeah, let's get started. I've had a few aquariums in the past and I actually have one now, which is the better Embellus tank. I just really struggled to keep any colour in the water from the botanicals. It was the same when I had a clown killifish biotope. I just could not get the the water to stay slightly brown. And I've spoken to a few people and they've sort of experienced similar things when trying to combine plants and botanicals. Now one idea is that the actual plants use some of the tannins as a food source, um, but another concept is that the plant aquarium substrates actually act as almost activated carbon and strip it out of the water. And now that is the theory that I'm going to be testing today. So what I've got is, Four of these glass jars that I'm going to be filling up with planted aquarium substrates and inert substrates and I'm going to be adding a set amount of tannin water and leaving them on the shelf to see how quickly those tannins disappear. Nice and simple little experiment but it should hopefully help us all know which substrates to avoid when we are trying to keep a little bit of colour in our tank. So the substrates I'm going to be testing in these jars is the Tropica aquarium soil which I'm yet to use. The Oasa scaper soil, which I have used, is currently the soil that is in the better and balanced tank, so I think this could be one of the contenders. And I've also got the Aquaforest natural substrate. I don't actually have a huge amount of it left, but hopefully it'll be enough to do this little project. And now, because the natural substrate is designed to be capped off, I'm going to cap it off with your plain uh, aquarium sand, and I'm also going to do a fourth jar, which is just the sand as a sort of control because I do have a bit of a science background and I've got to do this properly. So I've got some scales here which I'm going to weigh out the substrate with and I've got a foam here which I'm going to have recording as well so I can get some close-up footage. Oh geez that jar is stuck. There we go. I'm going to get some close-up footage of pouring it in as well so ignore this that is right there. So let's start off with 200 grams of the scaper soil. The reason for weighing this out so precisely is because I don't want to bias anything and speed something up by having extra substrate in one of the jars and in the other jar. So it's just about keeping things consistent. So that one is done for now. We move on. Load the next jar up. Get tropical soil. And this time I went just over. Now that's the tropical soil done. Put that to one side. Now, because I'm going to top off the natural substrate, it's going to actually look like it's a lot more. Um, substrate in this jar than the other one. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to see how much 200 grams look like and then just make sure I get enough sub sort of sand on top of it to make sure that it's completely covered. Just give that a shake, get it all to the bottom. And now, the last jar is just going to be sand. Nice and straightforward, 200 grams of sand. So what I've done is I've got 800 ml of water in this jug and I've moved the, one of the jars, this is just a plain sand one, down onto this shelving unit because the lid of the tank that I was working on to film is probably not going to support the weight of all of this uh, water and sand. So the first job is to add 5ml of this concentrated black water extract 
By doing it this way, I know exactly how many, uh, how much tannins I'm adding to the water, rather than using natural botanicals. So this is why I picked up this black water extract. I don't normally use it, but it's going to be very helpful for this. And now I'm just going to pour it in to this jug here. I'm just using my hand here just to disperse the water a little bit and not cause too much disturbance to the substrate, just because one of them's going to be layered and I don't want to mix it up too much. And you can see that five mil of the black water extract is actually making it really quite dark, so it's going to be really easy to see any differences over the time. And then just repeat this four times, well, three more times, and fill up all the jars. And yeah, just more careful with this one because it's layered. So I have just relocated my four jars onto this spare shelf in the other part of the garage. And what I've got is the pure sand, I've got the sand with the natural substrate, I've got the Oasiscape soil, and I've got the Tropica. The Tropica looks much darker because it's a darker substrate. Um, it is all the same amount of tannins in each one. So yeah, let's just leave them there and I will come back to you when I can see a difference. Or perhaps I won't see a difference and I'll come back to you in a few weeks to a month to two months or however long I leave it for and I'll let you know that actually it's not the substrates and in which case I will put a few little sprigs of like limna filler or other fast growing easy to grow plant illuminate them and see if adding a plant to each makes any difference obviously this is not perfect um sort of a simulation of an aquarium environment because there is no water flow in these jars so obviously normally you probably see whatever I see in these a little bit quicker when you've got water movement, pushing water through the substrate and allowing more exchange of the tannins if it happens. I'm expecting it to, but we shall see. Um, but yeah, that's it for today. I'm going to be sat here for a while and probably annoy my wife a little bit whenever she comes into the garage, but oh well. So I haven't completed this little uh, tannin jar experiment just yet, but something has changed and it was time to do a quick update. Um, so yeah, as you can see behind me, one of the jars has started clearing more than the other three. Um, this one here is actually the Aquaforest natural substrate capped in sand, and despite capping it in sand and there being no water movement in that jar, it has still taken in all of those tannins from the water. So that's really interesting, because that's not what I was expecting. I was expecting the scaper soils to be far quicker at removing those tannins. And it's so much so that I've always used the natural substrate in some of my more black water biotope inspired planted aquarium to give some, give the plants a bit of extra nutrients. And clearly that was the mistake. And it's actually taking in the black water really quite quickly. So yeah, I'm just gonna leave them for a few more weeks. Uh, it's only been two weeks so far and see if these two will start to clear soon. And the one with just sand, which is behind me, stays tannins the whole time so we're halfway done um but yeah wasn't what i was expecting already it's now been four weeks since i set up my blackwater jar experiment and i wanted to give you a final update on the status of them so first of all we have our natural inert sand substrate and there is a slight bit of color to the water and there is a lot of sediment that's built up and that I've now disturbed and it's getting kicked up into the water, which must be something to do with maybe bacteria growth, just eating and using the tannins, or I, I'm not entirely sure. Um, I didn't expect tannin acids to settle out as such, um, but something's definitely caused it to drop out of, of suspension and just develop into this weird, very fine sediment that sits on the bottom and is easily disturbed. So there is something um, going on here. <laughs> I didn't expect the sand to have any impact and I thought the tannin acids would stay as they were, but there must be some sort of uh, bacteria or something that's breaking these down in this jar. Um, this one here is the natural substrate from uh, Aquaforest, and now this one was the one that had already cleared at um, two weeks. As you can see, it's got the same uh, sort of sediment that's built up across the bottom of the jar. Uh, and this also had that natural inert substrate sand on top of it. So. Yeah, um, both of those have cleared. Uh, the natural substrate definitely sped up by two times as fast. So two weeks to clear and four weeks to clear. The other end, we also have this, which is the Tropica substrate. And again, as I'm moving it, I'm getting some sort of sub some sort of uh, sediments. This has been stirred from the substrate and pluming up into the water. But this water has gone very clear as well. And the only one that has not cleared, 
and is also the only one that does not have any sediment. So I'm expect I'm I'm thinking that the sediment is basically the tannins somehow breaking broken down and forming this sort of layer of detritus. Because in this tank, the water is still brown, and there is no sediment when I move it. So yeah, don't really know what's going on or the science behind what what's happened here. It's definitely not as dark as when I first set it up, but it is still slightly brown. So with that in mind. I think I'm going to be using the brown Awaza Safer Soil for future Black Water Aquariums um, because, well, one, the, the brown substrate actually works really nicely in botanical mesh aquariums. It, it gives you that sort of feel of a muddy substrate. Uh, and two, it keeps the tint, tint in for a lot longer. So, yeah, that's the end.